Today we will discuss Alport's personality theory. Alport received his PhD in psychology in 922 from Harvard, following in the footsteps of his brother Floyd, who became an important social psychologist. His career was spent developing his theory, examining such social issues as prejudice, and developing personality tests. One thing that motivates human beings is the tendency to satisfy biological survival needs, which all pot referred to as opportunistic functioning. He noted that opportunistic functioning can be characterized as reactive, past, oriented, and, of course, biological. But Allport felt that opportunistic functioning was relatively unimportant for understanding most of the human behavior. Most human behavior, he believed, is motivated by something very different, it is the self, which he called appropriate functioning. Most of what we do in life is a matter of being who we are. Appropriate functioning can be characterized as proactive, future-oriented, and psychological. Appropriate comes from the word proprium, which is all pot's name for that essential concept, the self. The self has seven functions, which tend to arise at certain times of one's life, sense of body, self, identity, self, esteem, self, extension, self, image, rational coping, appropriate striving. Sense of body develops in the first two years of life. We have one, we feel its closeness, its warmth. It has boundaries that pain and injury, touch and movement, make us aware of. Self, identity also develops in the first two years. There comes a point where we recognize ourselves as continuing, as having a past, present, and future. We see ourselves as individual entities separate and different from others. Self-esteem develops between 2 and 4 years old. There also comes a time when we recognize that we have value to others and to ourselves. This is especially tied to a continuing development of our competencies. Self-extension develops between 4 and 6. Certain things, people, and events around us also come to be thought of as central and warm, essential to my existence. My is very close to me. Some people define themselves in terms of their parents, spouse, or children, gang, community, college, or nation. Some find their identity in activities, I'm a psychologist. Some find identity in a place, my house, my hometown. Self-image also develops between 4 and 6. This is the looking glass self, the me as others see me. This is the impression I make on others, my look, my social esteem or status, including my sexual identity. It is the beginning of what conscience, ideal self, and persona. Rational coping is learned predominantly in the years from 6 till 12. The child begins to develop his or her abilities to deal with life's problems rationally and effectively. Appropriate striving doesn't usually begin till after 12 years old. This is myself as goals, ideals, plans, vocations, callings, a sense of direction, a sense of purpose. The culmination of appropriate striving, according to Allport, is the ability to say that I am the proprietor of my life. Now, as the proprium, or self is developing in this way, we are also developing personal traits, or personal dispositions. Allport began developing this theory by going through a dictionary and noting every term he found, that described a personality trait. After compiling a list of 4,500 different traits, he organized them into three different trait categories namely, cardinal traits, central traits and secondary traits. Cardinal traits, these are traits that dominate an individual's entire personality. Relatively few people develop a cardinal trait which practically define their life. 
often we use specific historical people to name these cardinal traits for example mother teresa central traits central traits are the building blocks of your personality central or common traits that make up our personalities traits such as kindness honesty wild shy and friendliness are all examples of central traits all pot noted that most people have somewhere between 5 and 10 of these traits secondary traits these are traits that are only present under certain conditions and circumstances these aren't quite so obvious or so general or so consistent preferences attitudes situational traits are all secondary an example of a secondary trait would be getting nervous before delivering a speech to a large group of people